This is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass a Mechanical Aptitude Employment Assessment Test. A Mechanical Aptitude Test is an assessment designed to measure a person's understanding of mechanical principles and their ability to apply them to various situations. Mechanical Aptitude Tests typically assess several key areas. One of the areas is Mechanical Comprehension Questions which gauge your understanding of basic mechanical principles, such as gears, pulleys, levers, and simple machines. Candidate is presented with the diagram or scenarios, and you're being asked to identify how they work or what will happen in a given situation. Spatial reasoning questions assess your ability to mentally manipulate objects in three-dimensional space. Candidate is asked to visualize how parts fit together, identify patterns, or rotate the objects in your mind. Tools and instrument questions evaluate your familiarity with common tool and instruments used in mechanical work. Candidate is asked to identify tool by names, functions, or images. And last but not least category is mechanical problem solving. These questions present you with mechanical problems or scenarios and test your ability to analyze and solve them. You may need to determine the cause of malfunction identify the correct sequence of actions, or choose the appropriate tool or method to fix the problem. Employers use mechanical aptitude tests to evaluate the suitability of the candidate for jobs that require mechanical knowledge and skills, such as engineering, manufacturing, automotive, and technical positions. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for an assessment test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end and, if necessary, multiple times until you understand all the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for this assessment, please make sure to follow the links in the description and in the comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started so we can get you prepared. Here's an absolutely brilliant and at the same time very tricky question, but I have full confidence that you'll be able to solve it you need to determine which item is the heaviest. And you're presented with four possible choices. Choice A, two pound of iron. Choice B, two pound of cotton. Choice C, two pound of potatoes. And last but not least, choice D, neither one. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I am pretty sure you already have an answer by now, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, all three objects, two pound of iron, two pound of potatoes, and two pound of cotton, will have the same weight. The explanation for this is that the weight of an object is determined by the force of gravity acting on it, and this force is proportional to the mass of the object. Since all three objects have a mass of two pounds, they will experience the same gravitational force and therefore will have the same weight. But the confusion here is that the density of these objects is different. Density is a measure of how much mass is packed into a given volume. Iron is much denser than potatoes or cotton. This is why, if you have to compare the volume occupied by each object, the iron will take up less space than the potatoes or the cotton. Presented images are very misleading and were designed to confuse you. So, the correct answer here is choice D, neither object, since neither object is the heaviest. Let's look at the question where you need to determine the trajectory after parachutists jump from the plane. Obviously, based on the wind and other external conditions, there would be multiple choices, but fortunately, you need to select only one out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, and C. And if none of the choices A, B, and C is correct, you need to select choice D, which would represent neither one. Take a close look to see what is the parachutist's trajectory after jumping from the plane. I have full confidence in your skills and knowledge, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To better understand the answer, we need to determine what changes from when parachutist is inside the plane and when parachutist jumps from the plane. When parachutist is inside the plane, both the parachutist and the airplane are moving together in the same direction. When parachutists jumps from the plane, there are multiple forces that will determine the trajectory. Number one is inertia. According to Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia, the parachutists will continue moving forward in the direction of the plane. 
Initially, the parachutists will have the velocity they had inside the plane, but they will slow down over time due to air resistance. Another force that will define the trajectory is the force of gravity. As soon as the parachutist leaves the plane, they will be subject to the force of gravity. Gravity pulls the parachutist downward toward the Earth. And the last force that will drive the trajectory would be acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is the force that pulls objects toward the Earth. When something is in the air, gravity causes it to fall toward the ground. The acceleration due to gravity is always the same for all objects near the Earth's surface, and it means that objects will fall faster and faster the longer they fall. So let's look closely at what's going to happen after parachutists jumps. After jumping, the parachutist initially maintains the horizontal velocity due to inertia. Once outside the airplane, they accelerate downward due to gravity until they reach terminal velocity. The deployment of the parachute increases air resistance, allowing for controlled descent, allowing parachutists to land safely. The closest answer that describes the solution is choice A. Is this what you got in your answer? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments so we can all learn. And now I have a question for you to practice your skills. We have a three different scenarios of person moving the object. Choices A, B, and C. If all items weighed the same, which object would be easiest to move forward if the same person is pushing with equal force? You need to select one out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, or choice D, neither one. When you solve this challenge, please make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an amazing problem where you need to exercise your brain and cognitive skills by calculating not just one number, but two numbers. You're presented with the scale and you see that the value of diamond as well as the sum values are missing. And you need to ensure that scale remains balanced by calculating the value of the diamond as well as the sum. And once you've done with your calculations, you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, values 18 and 96. Choice B, values 12 and 88. Choice C, values 20 and 92. And last but not least, choice D, values 19 and 94. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can complete the calculations. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the calculations. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, let's look at the picture closely to better understand what we're dealing with. We're presented with the multi-tier scale. And this scale has four tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4. Scale remains in balance because values on the left side and on the right side are equal and the values are represented by the total of numbers inside of each shape. For example, circle has number 12, hexagon has number 6, triangle has number 3, and square has number 4. Let's look closely at tier 3 to better understand how this tier remains in balance. As I already mentioned, each tier remains in balance because the numbers are equal on both sides. So on the left of the tier 3, we have two hexagons with total value of 12. On the right of the tier 3, we have hexagon, which equals number 6, plus 2 triangles, 3 plus 3. So on both sides, the total value is 12. This is why tier 3 remains in balance. Now let's look closely at the tier 2. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles. Each circle has a value of 12. Two circles would be equal 24. On the left of the tier 2, we have two circles with total value of 24 and the entire tier 3, which also equals 24. This is what keeps tier 2 in balance. Now, knowing this logic, we can calculate the missing value on tier 4. Because tier 4 needs to remain in balance, the value of 12 plus 6 should be equal to the missing value, which means that the missing value is 18. And the total sum will be calculated as the sum of all the numbers. The sum of tier 2 and tier 3 would be 24 plus 24 plus 48 on the right side of tier 1, which would equal 96. So the correct answer here is choice A, 18 and 96. Did you get to the different answer? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. 
Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of mechanical movement of objects. You are presented with the picture of person moving the object, and you need to determine if all objects weight the same, which one will be easiest to move forward if the same person is pushing with equal force. You need to select one out of four possible choices. Choice A. Person moving forward a cube. Choice B. Person moving forward a hexagon. Choice C. Person moving forward a ball. And last but not least is neither one. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let's analyze all shapes individually to better understand the answer. Let's start with the cube. Cube typically has a symmetrical weight distribution, which can contribute to its stability when moving on the ground. However, due to its edges and corners, a cube can experience higher levels of friction when compared to objects with rounded shapes and will be hard to roll. Most likely way of moving the cube forward would be pushing it, which will create a lot of resistance. Now let's look at the hexagon. Hexagon has six sides and the shape can vary depending upon the specific dimensions and proportions. Compared to a cube, a hexagon is generally has fewer edges and corners, which reduces the friction and makes it easier to move on the ground by rolling. Even though it might be easier to move than the cube, the ease of movement will also depend on the specific dimensions and weight distribution of the hexagon. Which brings us to choice C, sphere or ball, which typically has a smooth surface. The absence of edges and corners reduces the contact area with the ground, which results in a lower friction. This makes it easier to move the ball forward by rolling on the ground, compared to objects with edges or corners. This is why choice C is correct. It will have minimum friction and will facilitate smooth movement with minimum resistance. Here is the challenging problem by solving which you will boost your cognitive abilities. You are presented with five hints and using these hints you need to unlock the code and open the lock. The hints are in the digits 248 only one digit is correct and well placed. In the digits 845 two digits are correct but not correctly placed. In the digits 461 only one digit is correct and it is correctly placed. In the digits 592 only one digit is correct and it is well placed. And last but not least, hint that in the digits 904, none of the digits are correct. To open the lock, you need to process all the hints and select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, 518. Choice B, 485. Choice C, 418. And last but not least, choice D, 568. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I'm pretty sure you're done solving it by now, so I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer and solution. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, you solve this problem through elimination. And I'm going to start with the hint number 5, because it's the most helpful of all. Once we've learned that in combination 904 none of the digits are correct, we can eliminate two possible answers. We can eliminate both choices B and C because both of them have digit 4, which is an incorrect digit. Let's continue elimination to get to the correct answer. If we look through the remaining 4 hints, we learn that in hint 1, where digits are 2, 4, 8, only one digit is correctly placed, which is digit 8. In hint 2, two digits are correct, but they are not correctly placed, and they are digits 8 and 5. In hint 3, only one digit 6 is correct, and it is correctly placed. And last but not least, in hint 4, digit 5 is correct and it is well placed. Based on this, the correct answer here is choice D, 568. Do you have any hints to show how to best solve these types of challenges? If you do, please make sure to post them in comments. This is one of the most exciting questions because it allows you to test your analytical skills and understanding of physics. You need to determine which fan throws more air if all the fans rotate at the same speed. The choices are fan A, fan B, fan C, and last but not least, choice D, neither fan. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. 
As you might be well aware, there are two key factors to help determine the airflow rate. The first one is the size of the fan's blade, and the second one is rotational speed of the fan, which is measured in RPMs, which stands for revolution per minute. A fan with the larger blades can capture and move more air per revolution compared to the same fan design with the smaller blades. And this is exactly what we're dealing with here in this question. In addition, the rotational speed of the fan affects the airflow design. The higher RPM generally results in a higher airflow rate as the fan blades are able to move through the air at the faster rate. As you can see here, the fans A, B and C all have the same design. This is why, given the fact that three fans have the same design but different sizes, the fan with the largest size will throw more air compared to the smaller fans. This is why the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please share your answer and rationale in comments. I love this question because it really boosts your IQ and improves your intelligence. You're presented with three rows of objects. Each object represents a square and circle inside. You need to select the missing object out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I have full confidence that you figured it out by now. And this is why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To better solve this challenge, let's assign columns and rows to each object here in the picture. We will have columns A, B and C and rows 1, 2 and 3. This would allow us to reference objects better. As you might have guessed, each row describes the pattern of ball bouncing against the wall. Let's start by looking at the object A1. This is where the ball in the upper left corner and it moves downwards toward the middle of the bottom section. And this is where exactly we see the ball in the object B1. After that, ball bounces and moves upward and this is how we see it in C1. When ball bounces against the wall, it travels in the direction based on the angle of the initial impact. After the initial impact, the ball will continue moving in the new direction until acted upon by another force, such as hitting another wall or an object. Let's confirm this pattern by looking at the row 2. In the object A2, we see the ball against the left wall. Then it moves toward the bottom wall and then bounces against the bottom wall and then moves toward the right wall. Knowing the pattern, we can easily detect the answer now. If you look closely at the picture, the ball in the row 3 moves from the position 1 to the position 2 and then to the position 3. So the correct answer here is choice C. Did you get to the same answer? Or maybe you know the tips how to solve these problems better. Please make sure to post and share them in comments so we can all learn. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ and help you to pass any test. If the content was helpful, please click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and when you tell us, we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to download the materials. I really appreciate you for your endorsement, support and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become YouTube member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.